Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Triple Strand Ranch. Glad to be back with you again. It's been a while. I want to say it's been about eight months. I've been away on an adventure. That is to say, I've been at home, uh, uh, licking my wounds and trying to heal. It's worked out real well. I'm ready to get to work. Now, there's chaos around here today. It's just crazy. They're mowing the trees out by the road and the dogs are weird. They got cats throwing bowls down the stairs. I'm cooking all kinds of things in here, getting ready to do some jellies and all kinds of stuff. So I am not going to Instagram my kitchen for you today. You're just going to have to deal with the madness and it's going to be loud here and there. Bear with me. I'm going to make this as pleasant as I possibly can. Now, I'm wearing my sunglasses because I can't find my other glasses and these are prescription. So, it's weird. I know. I'm that guy now. I'm very sorry. Uh, however, if you think it's cool, let me know in the comments. Just, you know, hey man, those glasses are cool. Or even if you don't think they're cool, Hey man, that looks ridiculous. Cut it out. Now, we got ourselves a Muscovy duck today. The Muscovy duck is a strange duck, to say the least. It's like the meat itself is sort of a cross between a beef and a pork, it seems. It doesn't cook up. It doesn't eat like poultry, maybe. But I tasted it yesterday and for the first time, and let me tell you something. If there was one animal that combined everything on the farm into just one organism, this is it because it's so weird. And you'll see what I mean when we're finished here. But I've never put my hands on a Muscovy duck in my kitchen before. So, it only makes sense. Let's play with a Muscovy duck. Funny enough, in South Florida, which is practically the Amazon, <laughs> these ducks are an invasive species. That is to say, it is not their natural range and they are causing a great deal of damage. So people are contracted sometimes by the state to catch them. Fine and dandy, just like with the pythons and the iguanas. That's excellent. Free food, right? In this case, however, these are not wild. We raise these the same way we raise the ducks and the turkeys and the chickens. That is that they are all natural. But I've never played with one before. So I am not going to just stick this whole bird into the oven and roast it. We're not doing that. Roasting a whole bird, to me, as much as I love doing it, because I love roasted bird of almost any sort, including guineas. You guys need to start trying some of those. It's boring. And you don't learn much that way, right? So if I want to understand this bird, well, I need to do all kinds of things to it. I need to try several different applications. In addition to that, we're going to move I'm going to move you down to the bird here momentarily, but you'll see that the way this duck is shaped and is the case with most waterfowl it seems you have a lot of breast, a very long breast, and these stubby little legs, there's not much going on there, and the wings themselves are very lean. They're kind of hard to eat too, they're chewy. I'm gonna show you what to do with them in this case, but the same sort of principles are going to apply across the board. Even though the Muscovy duck has a darker meat and an almost, <laughs> like a livestock kind of experience to it, you can still cook it the same way, I believe. Now, I did some research. I did some studies on how Muscovy duck 
is cooked around the world. The Caribbean, in China, Taiwan, all over. The flavor profiles of these places and their cooking methods, they're pretty much the same as they would use for ducks of other sort and different things, right? But mostly I wanted to know, does it cook differently? Uh, no, it doesn't appear to, but we're going to find out. Now, I'm going to take the breasts off and the legs and the wings and the carcass. These are going to be our pieces. And I'm going to show you how I do it with my very dull Henkel's <laughs> chopper. Man, I haven't, I haven't sharpened my blades in some time. Now, let's get you on in here. Oh, before I forget. When you get your bird, if it is frozen, you'll want to put it in the fridge and let it thaw in the fridge if you have that luxury. You're going to get a better product in the end. Now, the difference between thawing in the fridge and thawing in the sink uh, may be subtle, but this is not the kind of bird that you want to uh, half-heartedly attempt to work with. You need this bird to perform at its best, which means you have to perform at your best. Put it in the fridge to thaw if you have the option. If you don't have the option, though, don't worry about it. It'll be fine. Pick it up in the morning on a Saturday, put it in the sink, it'll be thawed by the evening, and then you cook it. Don't worry about it. The differences are subtle. But the safe thing to do, of course, is to thaw it in your fridge. Now, let's get on in here and discuss what we've done. We're almost there. Why? What is my brain doing right now? First things first, you got your bird thawed out. I want you to rinse it off, inside and out. There are gonna be some little pin feathers here, or there, they're, they're practically irrelevant. Not pin feathers, but these down feathers. They're, it's just, it would take forever to get every tiny little filament off of these birds, thereby degrading the meat. Because for each second that you spend processing this bird, it's not on the ice. It's cooling down at room temperature. Hopefully, it's not 150 degrees outside. Although, at the ranch, we use the processing station room. Station room, the processing station room. No. So, if you get your bird and it has a few little feathers on it, or a few little pin shafts, or whatever, you can just pull those out or ignore them all together. In some places, They'll finish the bird off by taking a, a torch, a propane torch, and they'll torch all that stuff off of there for you. Or you could do it yourself. For me, if there are any egregious feathers, I'll pull them off. Otherwise, I don't really care about them. They don't do anything. You don't recognize it, it's fine. Now, so we got it out of the package. We've got it thawed, we've got it out of the package, we've got it cleaned up, we've got the feathers off of it. I want you to rinse your bird inside and out. Make sure there's nothing on the inside. Get out of here. Get out of here. See, here comes a cat. What is a cat doing here? Get out of here. All right, so <laughs> make sure you clean up the inside of it. Any kind of things that remain, sometimes up in the front, you'll find a little bit of the esophagus, right? Especially on these ducks, because the esophagus makes up two thirds of their body, it seems. So if you find anything like that, not a big deal, just pull them out. The same thing as if you bought a chicken at the store, there's all kinds of mess in those chickens. Now, and then I want you to dry it. Pat it dry with paper towels inside and out as best you can. You want crispy skin on a duck? You better get that skin dry. <laughs> now, thank you, Richard. That's Richard, my uh, uh, conure. Now, I'm looking at this bird. Now, this bird is young. This particular Muscovy is a young bird. And there are benefits and negatives for both harvesting a bird when they're young and harvesting a bird when they're old. 
In this case, this is likely to be more tender, but because it's young, the depth of color of the meat is not going to be as stark. Now, we have our cleaver. You could roast this bird whole, but I'm not gonna. We have our cleaver. This cleaver is not sharp at all. It's terrible. So, and that's a common thing in kitchens. In, in home kitchens all over the world, dull knives are common. Now, it appears as though we have a similar situation as most ducks. The body pretty much looks the same, right? Get out of here! I need a squirt gun. I'm going to squirt that kit. Now, it looks the same pretty much. So you get your bird. You got it all set up. Feel on it. Touch it. Touch it. You got to learn. This is how you learn how to do these things. Not just how to repeat something. Not just how to read something and do it. But this is how you learn these animals intimately. This is how you fully understand what you're doing in the kitchen. So you go from home cook to the next step, whatever that next step may be while you're still cooking in the same home. I don't know why anybody ever says that, but you take the whole leap forward once you understand what you're doing. So I'm feeling on it. I am, thank you, Richard. I am finding that breast, okay? We've got the, the clavicle here, if you will. It's probably not called that, but it might be. The wishbone, that's quite pronounced in this bird. That wishbone seems very thick. And you can pull the skin back and have a look at that. I hope you can see that. You can see the bone. Well, you can't see the bone, of course, but you can see where it lives, right, right here. And this piece. This ridge is prominent all the way down. So you don't have to worry about that. Stop it, pigeon. Ugh, it's a zoo in here. Now, I did that pulling some feathers out, I think. That's probably what happened. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to start cutting just a relatively shallow incision here because I want to look at it. Did we get close enough? And I think so. I think I'm going to go inward. So you see, I've turned my knife inward. Now remember, this is experimental here. So this, this is how I learn where things are. Now, it feels like a lot of times when you have a bird like this with such a broad breast, a lot of it will come apart just with your finger and everything that you can get off. What was that? It's a zoo in here. Everything you can get off with your finger is what you want to do. But now we've reached a point where that's not feasible anymore. So I'm running this knife right along that bone and on up to the front. I'm not too worried about wasting any meat because whatever is left on the carcass is going to be used. But I do want a nice breast filet. I want the whole thing, as much of it off of here as I can get. Now, we have some choices here. We followed the bone. We didn't do a great job in here, but that's okay. And you see we have too many cuts here, but that's okay as well. But you see, look at how broad that bone is there. Easy to remove, especially if you've done it before. Now, I can see this right now. That's an excellent piece of meat right there. That's gonna cook very nicely. And in this case, we're going to take that all the way off. So you have your leg here. I would say, if I had to guess, and that's all I'm doing here, by cutting this, by making this cut here, this incision, now I have created the line for my eyes and my hand to follow 
If you try to go in from this side and do it, you're kind of guessing, right? On the outside, we've made the cut, and I'm going to keep going. Now, look, we've mostly just cut the skin right there, right? Again, remember what I told you? However much you can just do, do with your fingers, do it. So you can separate some of those muscles. Man, I hope you can see that, and I feel terribly that you might not, but... We've got the muscles separated, so this is just the skin. Now we want to keep that skin happy and intact to make the leg presentation nicer. Now I'm going to cut straight across here. You can kind of see where the breast terminates. Kind of where it stops and something else starts. Now we get to the point where we're getting on into the wing. So, I'm going to go ahead and pop it. That skin is already drying out nicely. Remember, we're just experimenting. We're learning. Look, did you see it pop? Right there, when we pulled it back, it popped right there. So now, I very much know where the joint is. If it's too nerve-wracking to think about it as experimenting, think about it as playing. You're playing here, and you're learning. There's a little paper towel there. All right, so we've got that wing separated. Once you find the joint, separating the wing is simple. Now, we made a mistake here. That, that sound you're hearing back there, that very strange sound, is yet another cat with some kind of nose tumor. This place is ridiculous. So we did make a little mistake here. Not a big deal. The wing is intact. We're going to make soup out of these anyway. So just looking at it, looking at this wing, there's meat on it. There's a fair amount of meat. But we're going to make a soup out of it anyway. So I'm going to set that. I better get a plate. All right. So we got that wing off. This breast is pretty much off. Look at this. This is just some connective tissues, which I don't want to try to tear that off with my finger because I'm going to tear the skin all around it. So we're just going to go ahead and finish cutting that off. Now, that, let's just move this whole bird here and make sure you can see that here. Now, now you remember we had some blemishes when we started. And it looks rough, but that's not a big deal. What we'll do is we'll take our little cleaver here and we'll chop. Don't throw this away. Do not throw these pieces away. One of the beautiful things about these um, waterfowl is the whole bird is packed with flavor and nutrients. So I'm not worried about cutting extra pieces off and all of this because I'm going to use them. Don't throw them away. Now, is that a Gordon Ramsay level duck breast? No, no, it's not. But I promise you, outside of a restaurant, a high end restaurant, most restaurants probably aren't going to serve. But well, I, I'll tell you right now, I've been to a lot of restaurants and I've not seen any that serve a duck breast like this. I'm going to go ahead and put that breast over there with the wing. What a meaty... And let me just, to demonstrate, I'm a larger than average guy, I suppose. Here's my hand. There's the duck breast. So that's... I'd call that two servings, personally. Not that I couldn't eat more, but scientifically, I'd call that two servings. Now, now that we've taken off one of the breasts and one of the wings, let's see. Thank you, Richard. Let's see if it's easier to take the breast off after we've taken off the leg and the wing. Because I don't know. I have no idea. So... I'm going to get the wing out of the way first because it's kind of a pain in the butt.
So to get the wing, it's pretty standard wing removal. I cut the skin there so as not to tear too much. And then once we find that joint, boom. I believe that's it. Yep. Now don't get too carried away. These birds are strong. You know their wings are strong. What is happening here? See, this is interesting. Okay. All right. I didn't have the joint all the way. So we're going to go back in there now. We found the joint. And if you have a sharp knife, again, this is going to be easier for you. Where is that sucker? There it is. Boom. So this time, right now, this is a better presentation than that other wing. So, perhaps the answer thus far, the answer appears to be, what are you doing, what, what, what is the star of your meal? If it's the duck breast, we may require other options. Maybe the duck breast has more options. The wings, however, you wanna take those off first. Now, look at the legs. Now you know, waterfowl have funky legs, right? See, there's another one of those pin feathers. We're just going to pull it out. Pull out the pin feathers. Not a big deal. Richard. I'm going to put you outside. Okay. So, this weird little leg, it's like, it's buried in the skin, isn't it? You know, there's a chicken and a turkey. All of this skin is free and the legs can move freely. This leg is almost, it's almost like it's just tucked up in there. Right? So you see how it kind of moves under the skin and all the skin is connected? So we want to very clearly find that line, right? And a lot of times if you follow this, you can see this separation between the feathery, chunky skin and this smooth stuff. And you can follow that. But let's go ahead and find the leg, preserve as much skin as possible, including ours. We have a slot in there. See, he's getting mad because I'm talking. And I'm getting mad because he's talking. So we're gonna have a fight here pretty soon. So I'm gonna just, cause this is kinda hard to deal with. I'm gonna use the heel as I open her up now. We're getting on into this just nonsensical portion, right? This is just a, a mushy, mushy portion. Watch your fingers. You don't have to be this meticulous with it either, I promise. Just get it off of there. If you're just cooking it and for yourself and you don't care about all that nonsense. Now, look here. I'll show you here, but all poultry that I'm aware of has this oyster. Now you're familiar with the oyster, most likely. At the base of, or at the point of a leg quarter, if you look at this, even if it, just assume it was a chicken. Right here at the point, or on the carcass, if you're cooking a carcass of any sort, you have that oyster there, and this isn't a great knife, for that, but you can get that oyster out. Now the oyster on this bird is bigger than I thought it was. It was well hidden in there. All right, so you got the oyster, didn't get all of it. There's the backbone, there's the rest of it. But you know where it is that you can play with. Now, so we've separated that joint, you see? Separate, separate. Now remember, we're playing, we're experimenting, we're learning. It doesn't take this long if you're just getting in there and getting after it. All right, so same deal here. There's meat on there. This probably happened in the tumbling of it or in the plucking. That'll happen sometimes. Now that you don't want. You don't want damage. 
It happens all the time. It happens with most birds in some capacity, but you don't want that. Now, do we want to clean this up? I don't think I'd clean this up. I think that I'd probably just, if I want it to look pretty, uh, thank you, Richard. I, if I want it to look pretty, I'll just cut. We cut that. I can feel underneath. See, a lot of this here is this, it's like a silver, it's not quite a silver skin, or maybe it is a silver skin. I don't know, I'm not a doctor. But that is preventing the removal of the breast from the underside, and there's this is bone, right? You hear it? I hope you hear it. So if I just, just cut that so I can get my fingers in there, can we separate this breast mostly with our fingers? I'm just curious. I want to know. Get curious with your food. Careful with those fingers when you're cutting so silly like this. Now, see, that's those connective tissues, which are strong in these birds. All right. All right. So what I don't want to do is just tear this off. And that looks like that's what's happening. So coming up from underneath without a knife. Can you do it? Probably. Should you do it? Probably not. Now, there's like a hip right there. <laughs> All right. Let's just keep going. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Okay. So mostly with my fingers so far, I'm just cutting nuisances out of the way. Like right here, there's a little bit more of that connective tissue. And I'm just running my thumb along that bone. Look at that. Amazing. Now, up here in the corner, and you see these ligaments and stuff? You probably don't want to mess around too much with trying to pull those off with your finger. But if we get those out of the way, look at that. It's working. To what end? We don't know yet. We're going to find out. It's still working, though. And I'm taking my time. All right, so we've got ourselves to the backbone. All the way, well, not the backbone, the, uh, uh, what you call that thing? Yeah, that is the backbone. No, it isn't. That's the breastbone. <sighs> I think Richard got me so flustered. All right, so this is all the way up to the crest on that breast bone ridge plate thing. I don't know. I'm going to look that up, though, because now I feel silly. So we're going to just, all we're doing now, you see, it's just, on there just barely, right? Long cuts. I never remember the long cuts and I wasn't paying attention. So I lost a little bit, but that was almost perfect. All right, so, <laughs> wow, look at that. So removing the wing and the leg We've got more skin to work with, which is kind of neat that we can probably tuck it in or something. And this was all with the finger. Now what I'll probably do here, what is that the tenderloin? That might be the tenderloin. I'm gonna pull that off. That's got to be the tenderloin with one big ligament. Well, I'll tell you what folks, go. Thank you, Richard. Yes, laugh. Laugh it up, pal. This GoPro 11 is great in a lot of ways, but after about, what is that? What I guess it was only about 20 minutes or so, it overheats and it shuts itself off. So I'm saying this is what I believe to be the tenderloin and we'll set that over there as well. Now I am not gonna prepare this plate of cuts and make it all pretty like that because I don't have time. I ain't doing it. So we are going to prepare this one a little bit though. And again, None of this is going to waste. We want the skin, but we don't want it.
flopping all over the place, do we? No. And remember, this skin is going to shrink very quickly. And see, I'm gonna take this right here. Not necessary, but I'm just gonna take that chunk off and put it over there. Look how red it is. You see that? I I'm showing you over here, like, what a dingling. <laughs> Look how red it is. We got some of that silver skin. It might not matter, we're gonna find out. So we have a more square piece that you can continue to make neat. Now, I will say that that method there is a little bit more time consuming right now as I'm trying to demonstrate it. But if you just get in there and get after it, it probably won't be. But look at that, that's a better looking breast than the other one. That's a much better looking breast than the other one. There's your answer based on our current experiments. Take off the leg and the wing and then take the breast off. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and take this leg off and we're gonna talk about what's left on here. Remember, pop it. I don't need to take the oyster off here because I'm using it. I'm using the carcass. You can take the oyster if you want to. I'm not going to do it. I'm not even entirely worried about what's left on this leg. Because we're going to make soup. All right, a few pin feathers. Just take them off as you go. But that's a good looking piece. And we removed that one much more quickly than the other one. So taking off the breast makes that process easier and vice versa. So maybe it's just a matter of which you prefer. Now, thank you, Richard. 